Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Today, let's talk about projectors, a cool little box that you just put there and you get a nice large image on a wall. Now, wall projectors are becoming cheaper and more consumer accessible these days. I think most of us don't have projectors and because of this, we may not know of one fundamental problem that plagues a lot of them and that would be its positioning. Now, think about this. A projector is essentially just a fancy light source and it throws out a fresh drum of light. What this means is it's basically like a cone shape, right? But it comes out as a rectangular picture. Keep that picture in your head and imagine that for a very primitive projector that does only that, for your image to look right, you know, without any distortions, you would have to basically place your projector perfectly perpendicular to the wall. If there was any tilt at all to the position of your projector, the image immediately ceases to be a rectangle. It becomes a trapezium. However, if you go to say offices or schools, wherever they're using a projector that is either placed on a table or on a rack, it's never straight on with the wall. It's always tilted up a little because we want the image a little bit higher. But in those cases, the picture looks fine. Why is that so? Essentially, to correct for this problem, a function known as keystoning exists. If you know that an image is going to be distorted in a certain way, you can distort the image first in the opposite manner. That is, if your projector is angled upwards, you would essentially have an image that starts off narrow at the bottom and flares upwards. So, you can modify your image so that the original image is smaller at the top and wider at the bottom. When you projected that image, and if you did your calculations right, these two effects cancel out and you get a nice rectangular image. That's keystoning in a nutshell, and this is a feature that is available in almost all projectors these days. Some projectors even perform this correction automatically. How this works is there is usually an accelerometer inside the projector, and it either measures the act of you tilting the device, or it measures basically the direction of gravity. By being able to figure out which way is down, it can tell how much it is being tilted. With this, the projector is then able to basically figure out its angle to the screen and adjust accordingly. This is great because with keystoning, we can basically place our projector anywhere. We could have it at a very awkward angle compared to the screen, but we'll still be able to basically counteract that distortion. Now, with this said, there is one disadvantage. What happens when you pre-distort the image is that you end up using less of the pixels that your projector can actually put out. Essentially, you're losing resolution in doing so. The reason for this is because we're not actually making a change to the cone of light of the projector. The projector is still going to, well, basically project a frustrum that is distorted. It is still going to be a trapezium, but we are basically distorting the image digitally so that it can counteract for this. So what this means is we're using the same amount of pixels to project an image that now has an ugly border. So yeah, what this means is this is a workaround and as much as possible, you want to avoid it. If you can, place your projector perfectly perpendicular to the wall and that way you will lose a minimal number of pixels, if at all. That's all there is for this episode on projector keystoning. Hopefully this is interesting, I've had to fiddle around a lot with projectors recently and yeah, it's always interesting to see how you can correct for, you know, an angle mismatch. Again, that's it for this episode, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.